Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and have a good time together. Today we are going to talk about the best actors and video editors. They are fool and they think they can fool others. Those people when they cannot or they cannot handle the truth, they go in the wrong direction. Well, that's the way they do. If you remember before this fool, he made videos, supposedly he promised the Muslims he would debate me. And surprise, surprise, he did not debate me. He did edit my videos and he was doing a questionnaire. Did you say that? And the second I start answering, he hang up on me. And the same time, the Muslim want to teach me how to read Arabic. In the same time, their prophet did not know how to read Arabic. And the Muslim, they want to make you, or let us say, lose your credit by saying, you do not know Arabic. And the funny, I am an Arab, and all my life reading Arabic. And when I say I'm a scholar in Islam, they say he said he's a scholar in Arabic. Yet, both of them, those idiots, they do not know what Arabic is about. I will, do, I will show you an example, and then we will go to the video of Yasser Kadri, because this is the best comedy of the day. Here we hear we hear those both speaking about how Christian Prince is a terrorist. I terrify them, and I understand. I mean, if I am you, actually, you prove it already. You promised the Muslim to debate me, but you coward. You did not let me talk. You hang up on me more than eight times in less than three minutes, and you there is no there is no argument. It's you asking questions. Did you say that? And the second you start answering, you hang up on me and you call me bastard. People can watch the, the, uh, the recording so people they can laugh. This is a sample. You were playing a video about uh, women breastfeeding. Yes are Muslim no? women answer, prostitutes, yes or no? Answer the question. Answer. Are Muslim women are a prostitute, yes or no? Well, my friend, you're a prophet, he says. If a Muslim woman, she have a perfume, she is a prostitute. Do you agree with him, yes or no? He will not answer. The second I start answering, they will not answer. They will not let me talk. Now, let us go to the video and love before we go to Yasser Qadri's story. Whoever the brother, he's not Muslim, is he? The, the, the atheist there no. was uh, talking about. Yeah. That individual was pointing out, it's brutal, there was torture, but it's not only torture. There was all kinds of things. I mean, there was uh, forced conversions, there was uh, forced immigration. I mean, anyone can look at that part of history. So he's talking about the, the Inquisition in Spain, and he says the Christian prince is not against it. And here you see the hypocrisy of those donkeys. Isn't it your prophet? He says, I've been ordered, commanded to kill all mankind unless they convert to Islam. And you are the one who explained it in your channel and said, yes, not but except the Muslims. <laughs> so how come the Inquisition is something bad if the Spanish did it? And it's good if the Muslim did it and not as the different. The Spanish, they did not do it for those who they are defending their country. The one who betrayed them, they went after him. Right now in America, if somebody joined Taliban, they execute him. And I can give you many examples. As an example, uh, or the guy from, the, they killed him in Somalia. So you betray the, the, the nation, you join the army of the enemy, the punishment is death. Muhammad did not execute people because they joined the, 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 the army of the enemy. They are living there, and just because they refuse him to be a prophet. As an example, if we go here, we will see your prophet. As long as you are talking about immigration, acquisition, kicking people from their land, isn't this your prophet says? The messenger of Allah said, if I live, if Allah wills, I will expel the Jews and the Christian from the Arabian Peninsula. And he did that. Where is the Christian and the Jews in Arabia? That even a single person, he is a Christian or a Jew in the Arabian Peninsula. That because your prophet was not doing acquisition, he was doing genocide. So here you see the hypocrisy. He promised he will not let a single Christian or a single Jew. And right now in Mecca, in front of Mecca and Medina, there's a sign that says Muslims only. There's a highway for Muslims only. If you are a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu, you go there, you will be executed. Coward liars like their prophet. So they can do it, but you going after the one who betray you, you cannot. Mm. Uh, should I mention your prophet ordering the kill Abu, of Abu Nafi? The man who is very old and he killed him just because he don't like him. What about your prophet chopping a woman to pieces when she was alive, like Umm Qurfa? Or what about, you know, did he say torture? Did he say in the video the word torture? I think I heard the word torture. I think I did. Let me see. He 
he's saying the Jews took their side, therefore they deserve the torture. Basically, he's he is uh, because of his because of his extremism. He, this guy's an extremist. I didn't say anything of that, but let me let me show you. You just admitted the one who say support torture. He is extremist. What about the one who do it? Let us see what your prophet he did. You're a prophet. He did cut the hands and the feet of his enemy, and he gagged their eyes. Guys, do you see it? He just said he is against torture. Here you see the hypocrisy of those cowards. They have double standard. For me, I say what I believe. You know, the Spanish, they went after those who betrayed them. They gave their land for 400 years for the coward gang of Muhammad who came to rape their women, steal their wealth, and convert their, their land into Islam. So the Spanish, they were victorious. And then those Spanish, they went after every single individual. It doesn't matter if he's a Christian or a Jew who did join the enemy against the people. And that's very normal. Here we see Muhammad. He is enjoying torture. Is that torture to put nails which is heated with fire in the eyes of somebody? Is that torture or not? Is it torture to cut the hands and the feet from opposite direction and crucify them and let them die slowly? So they are against torture, but they practice torture. Actually, Islam, all of it is about torture. The man, he can beat his wife. If you steal an egg, we cut your hand. Is that a torture or this is a penalty? An egg. Somebody, he's stealing an egg. Muhammad, he says, you cut the hand of a person if he's stealing an egg or a rope. An egg. Which means he is hungry. A person, he needs some food. How you cut his hand? Under what logic? That is torture. That is not penalty. So those cowards, they play angels. And they play victims. And I will not be surprised if they make a video blaming me for losing their virginity later this guy is an he, he represents an extremist in the christian community just like we have extremists in our community uh, so muhammad was extremist in the muslim community when muhammad he says kill anyone who don't believe in allah he's, a, he's an extremist when muhammad he says uh, women are half a brain he's an extremist when muhammad he said cut the hands and the feet he's an extremist uh, so christian prince is an extremist like muhammad now we saw the london bridge attack Hmm. Bro, this is an extremist in their community, sorry to say. He's, he's basically saying what happened there is fine. See? Basically, so, so Muhammad Hijab is against it. Muhammad Hijab, he don't want the Spanish to kick him out from their land so he can go there and steal their money and their wealth and stay in their land forever. He's angry from the Spanish. For the Spanish, they were men and kicked them out like potatoes. Said, this guy's despicable, man. This and guy's finished. See, he's what, 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 what does this guy want from me? He's finished. What, the only thing he's going to get from You see, I will, I will tell you what I want from you. You are so upset because after your debate with uh, with David Wood, I made you shish kebab, everybody laugh at you. And this is why you are upset. And at the same time, you cannot debate me. Neither you or the, the boyfriend you have there. And he is the one who edited this video, by the way. Because you're not going to notice. He was in what is called debate with me. He was the one controlling the computer. And they put the computer far away from the, from the microphone so nobody will hear my answers. Look how coward they are. I mean, look at the setup. They put the computer far away from the microphone. So when a Christian prince speak, nobody hear him. And when they speak, everybody hear. Tell us more. From me, it's Mubahala. We do Mubahala. And then straight after, we'll see the results of Mubahala. Let us do Mubahala. I mean, here you see the stupidity of the Muhammadan. And I say Muhammadan, those who follow Muhammad, not every Muslim. Because later I will show you a Muslim who is not stupid. He want to do Mubahala. Do you know what Mubahala? Mubahala is what is in the Quran. Muhammad, he says that you bring your goat, I bring my goat. You bring your chicken, I bring my chicken. You bring your wife, I bring my wife. You bring your children, I bring my children. And let us invoke curse in the one who is lying. I mean, he want to prove me, he want to prove me wrong. By invoking curse in the one is line, have you ever heard of disability more than this? That is a behavior of a coward. He could not debate the Christians. He could not refute him. A bunch of monks, they came from, from, from Najran, asking him for a debate. The coward, he says to them, bring their wives. They are monks, you donkey. Monks don't have wives. So he want to do mubahala. This is how you can debate me? Let us do mubahala. Here we go. You did mubahala. We got you busted. In the cage, 
This guy's anti-Semite. He don't like Jews. He just said uh, they took the side of the Muslims. He's, he... Guys, you are anti-Semite. You don't like Jews. Let us see what Muhammad said about the Jews. In the Quran, Muhammad, he says, the most people who hate you are the one who they are Jews. Muhammad said, the time will come and the Muslims will be called to slaughter every single Jew. Let us read the hadith. Here you see the hypocrisy of those people. They are trying to play a theater and say like, he's anti-Jews. How I can be anti-Jews? A second ago, you were talking about me defending Paul. Paul is a Jew, you idiot. Mary is a Jew, you idiot. Moses is a Jew, you idiot. Now look, this is your prophet saying that the Muslims have a duty that the hour will not establish until you fight the Jews. And it's a stone. If a, if a Jew hides behind a stone, the stone will say, Oh, Muslims, oh, we need hijab, me buburka. Come, there is a Jew behind me, kill him. But he just played the game that Christian prince is anti semitic How I can be anti semitic you idiot? I mean, this is this the most stupid thing ever. Is your prophet anti-Jew? It's obvious he is. You are against the Inquisition, but you are sponsoring a person who want to kill every single Jew. That's how we get you busted. You are a potato. And here we serve you by oil and fry you by the heat of the Hadith and the Quran. And you have nothing to say. How many people will laugh at you at your hypocrisy when they see this? More. Tell us more, brother. He's basically, everyone should be against this guy, Muslim, Jews, and Christians. I don't even know why the hell am I dealing with this extremist. You, you hell? Because you are, you know, we made you a joke, uh, to face it. Why the hell? Why you are cursing your potato, son of Aisha? Do you think I'm going to be dealing with an extremist like that? The Christian community should be the first to condemn this individual. I mean, they condemn me, man. Look, my subscriptions fly skyrocketing because of you condemning me. I mean, that's nobody listening to me. I mean, what we can do, sadly. They should be the first, just like we have to condemn the London Bridge attack and so on and so forth. Do you condemn your prophet bridge when your prophet walk over the bodies of the people of Sophia? And then he raped her before even he walk away a mile away from, from, from the place he slaughtered her family? Do you condemn in that? This guy is dirty, man. Dirty? He's dirty. No, no, please hit in Arabic. Do you guard the veiled nature of a Christian prince? Focus with me, please. Guard, do you guard your boobs? Thank Christian prince saying to a Muslim woman, do you, do you guard your boobs? Oh, stop, 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 stop talking, stop prophet. talking. This is the link, this is the link, big mouth, big mouth, big mouth. If you, don't stop, if you don't stop, I will force you to open the camera and show me how what? you do this video. This guy, what? 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 Here you see the video editor profession, because all of this is video editing. They will not show you the original video. The original video is here. Those cowards, they are stupid, really. You know, I mean, they are a bunch of kids. They are not men. They thought we don't have the original video. We have it. So let us see how Mimi Hijab is saying. Let, let, me, let, us, let us play more of what he is going to say to us so we can laugh. They cut the video to show you Christian Prince saying things he should not say, brother. Now, this is Ibn Kathir. <laughs> As you see, I was quoting for her, and she was, actually, she is the one who starts speaking about a topic which is very filthy. And this filthy man is defending a woman. According to him, she is filthy. Listen carefully. Are you there? Sahela bin Suhail, are you there? Sahela bin Suhail. See, I was quoting the story about Sahela bin Suhail, who the prophet, he said to her, suckle me. And then he played my voice saying, suckle me. <laughs> Hello? I don't hear you. Don't, don't. And by the way, look at the face of Mimi Hijab. His mouth is open like he was surprised. And look at the face of Mimi, Fifi. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, okay. Keep the mic from your, uh, you know, don't do breastfeeding now. Later. Now, let us see what Ibn Kathir said about the muta. I think she is doing breastfeeding right now, taking a break. I will, I will stay with you. I will stay with you. I will stay with I you until come. tomorrow. Listen, listen. No, no. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I will stay with you until tomorrow. I will, I will keep. I will keep. I will make you read the whole page. 
I'm, if I'm we not, find, I'm not if we find, if we find in the same page you're reading from. Anyway, so just to show you how those cowards, they always change the truth and they try to flip it upside down. This is the original video. The funny is that this guy, he have a video speaking about Muslim women approaching Muslim men, how it is wrong. How what? How it is wrong. It's not right for a Muslim woman to do that. And the sheikh he was answering, let me see what is the video. Uh, here we go. Can Muhammad Hijab put hot pictures of himself on the social media? And it shows Muhammad posting himself with the pinky. He's a pinky guy. He like pink. So, and the question was, can a Muslim woman speak to a stranger, uh, a Muslim man, even doing dawah? And the Muslim sheikh he answered. He says, no, this is not right. Sisters. But if sisters are not public online, how can they approach other sisters? Does that make sense? So yeah, if, if, if there isn't a, a female a alternative point, yeah. of the dawah for a woman, then it, it doesn't facilitate for a woman to go to another woman. So that what will happen is they'll end up going back to the men and that, that fitna will be there. So which is akhaf for the rain? And which is the lesser of two evils? The list of two evil. If a woman speak to a man, speaking to women is the list of two evil. This is the, op the opinion of Fifi Mimi Hijab. Did you just hear it? Did you hear it? Now, if a woman is speaking about religion, question about Allah, Muslim to Muslim, this is the list of two evil. What if a woman, she speak like this to me? And he is the one quoting her, defending her, saying that she was a pure Muslim woman. And I say to her, suckle me. I mean, look at this scam. Let me move this video here. Uh -huh. For some reason, this video is not allowing me to move it. Here we go. This is the original video. So as long as Muslim women, she should not approach a stranger. And according to you, this is a not decent, decent behavior. Why oh, you, you want to to bring this? Okay, why you why you kiss the cross? Show me where you, show me where it says in the Bible, kiss the cross. No, no, no. Show me, you, show me. No, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't, I don't. I don't. So notice, uh, we were talking about kissing the black stone. I said to her, why your prophet kissed the black stone? We were not talking about breastfeeding. Who is the one who mentioned breastfeeding? Listen carefully, or breast stuff. I don't kiss anything. Show me where, why, you why you're a prophet, you why you're a prophet, the pagan prophet, you why your pagan prophet kiss a stone. Your prophet no, is a pagan man. No, you why he kiss a stone? Why he kiss a stone? Can you pray the Holy Spirit, the what? God in the heavens? I know, I know all this. Okay, I live in Arabia, I live in Africa. You know, you know where, you know. And the funny, they, they claim in their video that she is very young. I mean, this woman, she live in Arabia, she live in Africa, she is all over the place. She is Ibn Battuta. Yet she is very young. She is, trust me, my friend, when a Muslim, he says very young, what does that mean? Is that six years old like Aisha? When you ask him about Aisha, she was six years old. She was, she was mature. This woman, she is in her 30 and they made her very young. And let us see how the young Muslim women speak in her 30. We're in hijab. You know, you know what? You know what? Why you kiss, no, why you're a prophet kiss the black stone? He's a pagan. You are a pagan. Did, did you kiss a stone or not? Do you, do you do you kiss who a stone? Create, who, create who, created who, who, who created the black stone? Who created the black stone? Who created the black stone? Jesus. Jesus? No. Here, how come my hijab did not answer this? Jesus created the black stone. Jesus created the whole universe. She admitted that Jesus is God. Jesus don't create stones. He created the whole world. But you must no, kiss. You must have kiss his stones, right? Why? Why your prophet kissed the black stone? Did he kiss the black stone? Jesus kissed nothing. Your prophet did. Why your prophet kisses stones? Okay, Jesus, Jesus do more actually. Worse actually. Ah, he play with his so mother boobs. Tell me why he's doing he, that. He play with his mother what? Boobs? You must be okay. You see, you see guys. You see guys. You see guys. You see how you see how savage they are. Do you see how savage they are? They said I call this woman whore. Well, isn't it she? Can Mimi hijab? Be brave and tell us why he cut this part from the video. That she is saying Jesus, he play with his mother sexual thing. Why he cut it off? For this is the biggest fraud in the history of the Abdul in YouTube. 
He want to make a theater that this is a decent Muslim woman. I called her a whore. Well, she is. If she is not, she will not say what she said. If she is decent woman, what, what she is talking about? We were talking about kissing Blackstone. What does this have to do with anything? How this is, can be end with Jesus playing with his mother as she said? Listen carefully. Your prophet kisses stones. Okay, Jesus, Jesus do more actually. Worse, actually, ah, he play with his so mother boobs. Tell me why he's doing he, that. He play with his mother what? Boobs? You must be okay. You see, you see, guys, he's you see, guys, you see, guys, you see how you see how selfish they are. Look what she said. Oh no! Look what she said. Not, Look what she not said. Like you. Okay, but show me, that, show me. Okay, okay show me a verse. Show me a verse. Really? Show me a verse saying that Jesus he played why with his mother boobs. Show me his a verse. Show me a verse I saying that Jesus, he blame. Listen, listen, you are obviously a trashy person. You just insulted Jesus for no reason. You say Jesus, he play with his mother boobs, right? Okay, you're, you, listen, you are a liar, number one. Number two, it's your prophet who order women to give their boobs to strangers. Is that true or not? No, it's not. Can I suckle you? Okay, let us read the hadith. Then. This is the part he play. Christian prince says, can I suckle you? Do you see that coward Mimi Hijab? He played his part from all the thing. I mean, there is no way they did not see the part, the, 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 the part she is talking, right? They, they played the whole video so to, to find something supposedly I say, they used against me, right? How come they cut the video and they did not show that she is the one speaking about boobs? She is the one who's insulting Jesus, which Muslim claim that they defend Jesus and they love Jesus and Jesus is a prophet for them. How come they took the side of a woman? So obviously she is a whore like Muhammad Hijab. Because the whore is not only a woman she have sexual relationship for sex, is somebody he fabricate. That is a whore behavior. No dignity. And obviously you are a whore, like your prophet. So they flip the truth upside down to make you look bad. Eh, you could not do it. We have all the, this is why I ask people to download my videos, it's all over. And then he says, Christian Prince, he says, Muslim women, they have AIDS. When the fact she was the one saying in the, in the, in the, in the text, that Christian Prince, you could not find a woman to marry you because all women, Christian women have AIDS. I said, well, the fact is spread between Muslim women way faster for you have multiple partners. The man, he have four wives. He go to Thailand, he sleep with many and he come back, he give it to four in the same day. So they take your response, they play with it, they cut it, and they, meet, they edit it, and they make it something totally different. Cowards. And this is exactly what they did with Yasser Kadri. It says this is about the muta. Are you going to do breast yes. for me? Listen, 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 no. listen. If we see in the, same, in the same page... Anyway, you can watch the video and laugh by yourself. Now let us go move on. If you remember uh, Mimi Hijab, he had a debate before with uh, David Wood. What happened in that debate? He says Muslim scholars say we should take this literally. Which Muslim scholars? Hmm. Here he was teaching Mimi, uh, Mimi, he was teaching David Wood to speak Arabic. He told him, you don't know Arabic. You know this is coming. You don't know uh, Hebrew. You know this is coming. So he was teaching him how to read Arabic. Let's go a little bit, uh, a little bit back, so we can uh, laugh a little bit. Give me a second, please. After 20 years of researching Islam, you come with this. This is why he don't dare to debate me because he, when you try to make a mockery of a Christian prince, Christian prince will whip the floor with you. David Wood is a gentleman. He's a nice person. For me, you know what will happen. That's why you don't dare to debate me. After 20 years doing research, you come with this? Or what, with this what? Okay. Uh, that Allah yusalli ala nabi And he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. There's a difference between yusalli lahu and yusalli ala in the Arabic language. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. I knew it. And that's why the translators put four, not to the Prophet. 
<laughs> Supposedly now he think he, he got him busted. He 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 him you eat him, you don't know Arabic. I'm going to teach Arabic. So he teach Christian Prince Arabic. Christian Prince do not know Arabic. And now he is giving lesson to David Wood. So he says he pray for, not two. What does that mean? You don't know what the, the words in Arabic mean. Don't hate, speak salah. This, come on, please, don't embarrass yourself. This comedian, he just said that Allah he pray for, not pray to. I mean, how stupid this answer is. Who care if he pray for or to? You say, don't embarrass yourself. I suppose you speak better Arabic, right? Obviously, you are a stupid person who do not know what are you talking about. Because the second you say Allah he pray for, it's mean Allah he pray. Who care he pray for or to? Allah he pray, when he pray, what, what is the word pray mean? You pray to somebody else. Allah praying to who? You said he is praying for. Okay, pray to, he pray for Muhammad. Prayer is a request. Is a request you. This is here, you see the stupidity. And then later, this Abdul, you don't, I don't want to waste your time. The video will become so long. Then later, uh, he asked him about uh, the person, uh, he asked him about Allah have body parts. Pray, mean, you pray to somebody else. Allah praying to who? You said he is praying for. Okay, pray to, uh, he prayed for Muhammad. Prayer is a request. Is a request you do to someone else. It is smooth. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> and that's why the translators put four, not to the Prophet. Allah has parts. He says Muslim scholars say we should take this literally. Which Muslim scholars? The Prophet's companion said. The coward he said that Allah have, uh, uh, David Wood, he said to him, Allah have parts. And look how they try to avoid answering by a mockery. Who said that? Your prophet said that you idiot. Your Quran says that Allah have parts. He have hands, he have foot, and he says we should not take it literally. Let us see if the Muslim Sunni, are you a Muslim Sunni? Or you are Shia? Obviously you are not Sunni. Here we go. Those are the Muslim Sunni, they are telling us if Allah has parts or not. It says Muslim scholars say we should take this literally. Which Muslim scholars? anhu, the prophet's companion said, the Prophet Muhammad once said, the meaning of the saying, the Prophet, Allah's hand is ever full. Now he used the word, Yadullah Mil'ah. Who said that? He's a prophet. Mimi Hijab is making fun of his prophet. That's why he gets so upset from me, for I get him busted. He's making fun, literally, not of David Wood, making fun of Muhammad. Now, why do the translation here, we use the word hand? Because Allah also yeah, talk about Himself. He had Allah uh, The hand of Allah is above their hands. But how do the hand of Allah look like? Don't imagine. <laughs> Just leave it. <laughs> do Allah have hand? As a believer, what do you say? Yeah. Allah said, he have hand, what can I say? <laughs> you must say, Allah's hand represent his power, his authority. Power, Allah said, Qudra. Power, the word power means Qudra. Or you can, is Qawiyun, Qaharun. But the word yet, you open any dictionary, Arabic dictionary, what is the meaning of yet? Literally, yeah, it means hand. Mimi Hijab, did you hear it? Open any Arabic dictionary, you donkey. Actually, the word donkey is too much for you. You are a mule. Which the Quran says Allah created the mule. I don't know how that happened. In the same time, he said he created uh, everything male and female, which means wife and husband. I'm not sure who is the wife of Mr. Mule, but they can have babies. Just say it hand. I didn't say Allah said. Allah said. The Prophet said, who knows Allah better than Allah? Mimi Hijab, he know. Are you kidding me? Mimi Hijab, he knew Allah better than Allah. Who knows Allah better than Prophet Muhammad? <laughs> After they did great humiliation to their Prophet, making fun and mockery of whoever believed that Allah has parts, and this is Muhammad, making fun of mockeries of whoever believed that 
Allah has brought, and this is the Quran, which means Allah, making fun of mockery, and whoever believe that Quran is uncreated and will never destroyed, making fun of mo and mockery of anyone who believe that the word of Islam, the word of God, is eternal, will not be destroyed, and he said everything will be destroyed, and now it is time to scam and ask for money immediately just the not not even eight hours after the debate those two guys who they thought it's a great opportunity to beg for money and scare the Muslims and make themselves that are the only one who can save the Muslim world from leaving Islam so they made a video saying do you know that 160,000 Muslims of Islam claiming that they are the one who can bring them back to Islam Millions and millions of pounds are spent in attacking Islam, and this is, a, this is a fact. The question is, how much do we actually give when it comes to protecting Islam? But brothers and sisters, what about the people who are on the front line doing da'wah and trying to give the clear understanding of Islam to the people? Are we not going to help these people? Recent Pew research shows that between 2010 and 2016, 160,000 people have left Islam. Between 2010 and 2016, 160,000 people have left Islam. And they are the one who will save Islam by making donation to them. I mean, it's obvious. Now, you know, I don't want to play the whole thing because it's really kind of funny. Uh, but each time he say that Allah have no uh, uh, body, Allah have no parts, I really love. And the funny here, you see Mimi Hijab reciting Quran. And if you hear his recitation, you will die laughing. Brothers and sisters, who are we going to turn to? Allah says in the Quran. He is, he, is, he is quoting a verse from the Quran saying, Who want to give Allah alone? Who want to give what? Allah alone, a mortgage. Have you ever heard of a God he need a loan? Okay, you give it to the loan. You give it to me, me hijab. Now we understand what those people are about. You finish a debate. Few hours after you post a video saying give Allah alone and we have, this is our account. And Allah will double your reward. Huh? He was reading for us this verse. Brothers and sisters, Muslims are leaving Islam. If you want to save Islam, please. And, and imagine the voice. I mean, why why you Muslim don't play for us the voice of Mimi Hijab reciting the Quran so you, you can scare the whole of everybody? You bring us somebody, he have a nice voice to recite the Quran. Listen, it is recitation. It's scary like the devil. So this is the whole purpose and this is the whole story. And we knew it. You are a fraud like your prophet who's asking people for money as a loan. You give it to Allah. And now you are the one who collect the loan for Allah. And if it's not you, the whole Muslims will leave Islam. I mean, it's obvious. Look, you are defending Islam. By defending the women, she said that Jesus played with his mother breast. Huh? By defending a Muslim woman, she is obviously like, like the mother of the believers, did muta with Safwan ibn Mu'attal. And the funny, the Muslims, like Mimi Hijar, not all of them, they speak about honor and dignity. But isn't it your prophet, he says, a Muslim woman, she can't do muta? Which means you can have sexual intercourse for three days, three nights. Isn't it this prostitution? Actually, he himself, he said in one of his videos, as I remember, he said that muta is a prostitution. He was insulting the Shia. But the fact, the one who practiced the muta is Muhammad. And the one who practiced the muta is a Sunni. And there is no verse in the Quran saying forbid the muta. And actually, there's a hadith confirm that in the time of Abu Bakr and Umar and the Caliphate after Muhammad, they practice muta. But here you ask yourself, the dignity, where is the dignity? If you are a person who is against uh, prostitution, how you accept that your sister, she will go sleep with somebody for a night or two for the purpose of making money? Even Muslim websites and scholars, they explain what the muta is. They say, and read carefully, this is alislam.org. They say, muta is a rented woman. Is what? Is a rented woman. Muta is considered as a kind of rental because in general, in general, man's basic aim 
in this kind of marriage, they call it marriage, imagine, is sexual enjoyment of the women. And in return of the enjoyment, he give her some money or property. Do you see it? This is what Mimi Hijab, he believe, and this is his religion, and yet they speak about dignity, honor, and Muslim women wearing burqa. And by the way, the name burqa is, like, is your last name. And this is explained why you edit videos. You bit burqa on them. Now, I'm not going to play really too much of those, a lot of garbage there. But I want to go to this video made by an ex-Muslim. His name is Samir Abdullah. I have a conversation with him. Actually, he's a nice guy. But, you know, we, we disagree about many things because he is an atheist. But we agree in many things about Islam. This guy, he is the one who got Muhammad busted, by the way, about the video of Yasser Qadri. And there is a link for his video down. You can go to his channel. Let us see what Mr. Samir Abdullah, who is an ex-Muslim, saying. Yasser Qadri is no stranger to controversy. Being the academic, he has sometimes ruffled feathers with comments he has made on different issues. This time, even worse than before. He said something now, again, that shook the ground or pulled the rug below the Dawa guy's feet. So much so that Muhammad Hijab took the drastic step of deleting the last 30 minutes of his interview from the point Yasakadi started talking about, guess what? Quran preservation. Hold on, my friend. Mimi Hijab, he did not delete the part of the Quran. Mimi Hijab, he did not do it. It was Allah who did it. Isn't it Allah who do the same? Allah in the Quran, he says, that if you want you to forget Quran, if Allah, he calls you to forget Quran, he will give you something like it or similar. So Mimi Hijab, he have part of the Quran. Uh, he don't like and Allah told him, we need to make them forget it. The same as the Quran. And the funny they say to us that the Quran is preserved. When the Quran itself is saying that Allah caused the Muslim to forget the Quran. And what was the verse was made by Muhammad because himself he forget the Quran. Don't you know Muhammad he forgot the Quran? Look, none of our revelation we abrogate or cause to be forgotten even allah himself causing mimi and fifi and susu -su to forget the quran yet the muslim they say we did not forget the quran so they're accusing allah to be a liar and allah will send you something similar or better but that will not change the fact that you forget the quran if we go to the hadith we will find that muhammad was really forgetting the quran let me see if i some hadith of Muhammad saying that here we go Muhammad forgetting such and such verses and such and such surahs this is Al-Bukhari the Prophet himself he forget the Quran the Prophet heard a man reciting the Quran in the mosque and said may Allah bestow his mercy on him as he may reminded me of such and such verses and such and such and surah by the way the Muslim they will say see he doesn't say he Forget it. It says here, remind me. And let us show you. And here we go. This is Sahih Bukhari too. It says, in such and such verses and such and such verses, Surah, which I was caused to forget. But yet they say the Muslims, all of them, they memorize the Quran. When the Prophet himself is the first one to forget the Quran. And he come with the verse saying, oh, Allah caused us to forget the Quran. It's okay. But Allah will give us something similar and better. And here you ask yourself, is Allah in competition with Allah? He will give something similar and better. And how in the world he caused you to forget something to give you something similar? So I'm going to make you forget about the papaya, but I'm going to give you a papaya. Obviously, your God, Allah, and your prophet is a papaya, the spinach guy. Get ready. We go back to the video of our friend Samir Abdullah. This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim, Abdullah Samir here. I'm exploring the topic of Islam and how it affects the lives of believers and disbelievers. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. Yasser had established a rapport with Muhammad Hijab. 
Hijab was giving him the chance to air some difficult questions and tackle them on his established platform. Hold on, sir. hold on, Abdullah, please. You know, you missed something. We need to introduce who is Yasser Qadri to Mimi Hijab first. If we go, we will see uh, uh, Mimi Hijab introducing uh, uh, Qadri as his master. Listen carefully. And has been in the West has acquired. Who is Yasser Qadri? Mimi Hijab Tiras. Production at all. Someone who has done it all in Dawa, has been in the East and has been in the West, has acquired, as I say, more degrees than a thermometer. Dr. Yasser Qadri, how are you? I mean, his guy do not need introduction. This guy is a big shake. This guy he known in the West and the East. This guy he is coming from the sky. This guy his shoot is so big. His hat is so small. His tie is like a leech. His guy he have the most. And I mean, what is left to say? And then later, they wage war on him. And later, they cut his video. Look, the video here is one hour sixteen minute and twenty six second. How many? One hour. 16 minute and 26 second how is the original video one hour 45 minute and eight second what happened the video went in diet it's very normal when you want to lose weight you go extreme in less than one hour after the interview happened Mimi Hijab, he went in diet and he cut a huge part of the video, more than 30 minutes actually, is gone, disappear by using the invisible hat of the Garfield cat. So this guy who is a biggest scholar and Mimi Hijab have tons of interview. And you see, when you bring somebody to do interview and you keep asking him questions, obviously you consider him a master. Otherwise, why he is there? Correct? When you, when you bring somebody and you are asking him all kinds of questions, obviously what you want is the questions with the answers from this guy. Otherwise, why he is in the interview and you are the one who is just asking questions because you are a student. And actually, later we will see Yasser Qadri, he, he, he speak to Mimi Hijab in his size. He said to him, if you don't understand this, please, you can join my class. I would like to see Mimi Hijab wearing the uniform and go into the class of Yasser Qadri, and he got a spank for not doing his homework. <laughs> Did he say to you live in your interview, if you don't understand it, join my class? Did he say that to you? <laughs> Let us go back to the video of... Uh, our friend Abdullah Samir. This gives Yasir Qadi credibility and a safe space to discuss with someone friendly on his side while quashing the worst rumors and attacks that are coming up against him. It's a smart move. The last conversation that Hijab had with Yasir Qadi, however, took an unexpected turn. It went into a direction he wasn't expecting and did not look good on Hijab. I think Qadi doesn't care that much what anyone thinks. So he just said what he wanted. He's sort of untouchable and cares more about the truth than pleasing his audience. Or maybe he was just overconfident. Hijab asks a question about the Quran email leaks, which I discussed in my video, Yasukadi has doubts in Islam. Email leaks. You see, the Muslims, they betray each other. You cannot trust, they don't, you, a Muslim cannot trust a Muslim. A Muslim, he sent an email to somebody, they spread the email or because this is what Muslims do. Email leaks. They are speaking privately about the Quran corruption privately why you want to leak it because we are muslims we betray each other and this is the example um hijab said brother imran aka dawa man had leaked some quran preservation emails and can you explain yourself about these emails do you consider the hafs and asim and so on munazil meaning revelation from allah here is what yazul qadi said so one of the brothers um yani he did something again unethical uh, he was expelled from the list and the list was basically banned because of that stuff, because of that. He couldn't refute to my argument, so he sent it to uh, one of your madkhalis in, uh, uh, in uh, England. And so then, of course, this madkhali gave it to the other one. And so obviously, any, everything, you know, uh, you know, all whatever broke loose. But again, this was not something I brought up in public. And I would never bring it up in public. 
and I don't think it... Why, why you will not bring it up in public? Why? Why, you know, burqa, the burqa religion. Anything is a shame for a stupid, we put a burqa on it. We will not bring it in public. Why you are doing that? It's not for our benefit. People will laugh, and we are laughing. We will go, it's in public. You see, the Muslim, they say, if Allah will, nothing will happen. It's Allah will. So it's obviously Allah will to get you all of you busted and to get himself busted by Allah will. It is wise to bring it up in public. It's not wise. Every single student of knowledge knows who studies Ulum al Quran that the most difficult topics are Ahruf al Qiraat. Every single, every single. But no, Mimi Hijabi don't agree. He's not one of them. He's a scholar who later will join the class of. Yasser Kadri, and you know, I find it very funny when Yasser Kadri he says to Mimi Hijab, if you don't understand, join my class. Mimi Hijab, he didn't say, what are you talking about, class? I'm not your student. <laughs> He's talking to him as his little puppy. Join my class. You know, with all those people who speak to me to learn from me, I never say join my class. Unless we are talking about teaching Arabic, which is very normal. Join my class. How insulting it is to say such a word, a mimi hijab like a puppy. He did not say, I do not need your class, man. So the one who will be asked publicly in the front of his face to join his class, saying later he will refute him. He did not dare to say in the front of his face he will refute him. Why did you not say it? And the concept of Ahruf and the reality of Ahruf and the relationship of the Rahmanic Mus'haf with the Ahruf and the preservation of the Ahruf. Is it one? Is it three? Is it seven? And the relationship of the Qira'at to the Ahruf. This is a topic that when you're the beginning, beginning student of knowledge, you're like, what is all of this going on here? When you go a little bit more, you learn to simply memorize what your teachers say and regurgitate it out. And you don't fully comprehend. When you do a deep dive is when things get very, very awkward and difficult. Mm -hmm. And this isn't new. This is from the time of the Sahaba, in the Sahih or the Hassan Hadith of Ubay bin Ka'b, the Hadith of the Ahruf, that when the Prophet mentioned the issue of Ahruf and that there are different Ahruf and whatnot, this is in the version of Muslim Imam Ahmad, Ubay bin Ka'b says, authentic Hadith, فَدَخَلَ فِي نَفْسِي شَكْ In my heart, a doubt came that I hadn't had about Islam since the days of Jahiliyyah. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. The issue of Ahruf and Qira'at caused confusion to somebody whom the Prophet said, if you want to listen to the Quran directly, listen to Ubay. Ubay is Even the one who Muhammad, he recommended to listen to the Quran too, he himself, he had a doubt about Muhammad when he heard the stories of those Ahruf stuff. This guy is quoting the truth. From the time of Muhammad. And how Muhammad refuted the Ubay, Ubay. Listen carefully how he refuted him. He's not some even average Sahabi. He is the Qari of the Quran. He is the master. He is who he is. And he goes, Fadakhar fi nafsi shak. Like, what is all of this stuff? And the process the prophet, put, it, yeah. put his hand. And then he goes, ha, it all went away. <laughs> you know, guys, he have a doubt in his heart about Muhammad being a prophet. Then Muhammad, he touched his chest. And then all the doubt is gone. It's a miracle. This is more powerful than Jesus making to the person who could not see, see by touching his eyes. This is more powerful than Jesus saying to the dead man, walk and walk. This is more powerful than Jesus saying to uh, the sick, you are healed. The women who she's bleeding, you are healed. This is more powerful. This is how Muhammad refuted. This is how he proved that he's a prophet. He have adopted in his heart, he touched his breast. I'm so glad that Obay was a man, not a woman. Uh, but by the way, your prophet have a very bad habit about touching men's breast. As you remember in the hadith, it says that the prophet, he was kissing a man and the man was kissing him down his belly. So maybe this is how he was uh, <clears throat> convincing the guy that this is uh, how we do it as you see the prophet he booked up booked him under his ribs with a stick and he said let me let me take the he said and then he said 
you are uh, you are wearing a, a shirt but I am I'm not the prophet then he raised his shirt and the man he embraced him and began to kiss his side oof 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 the prophet doing da'wah in the speaker corner by lifting the shirts of somebody else getting naked and then he left his shirt too and then they start kissing each other billy billy down their billy actually it says kishha which means down his billy where you are why you are kissing him there what is that exactly doing anyway not our topic man why you are changing the topic i'm crazy i mean disgusting go back to the topic tell us more of our friend abdullah samir now for the first time i'm telling you here what was the crisis i mentioned it referenced it but i never explicitly said it why didn't i say it because it should not be said in public but unfortunately these brothers because they released the emails so then i have to then get to get it this was the issue that the issue of ahruf and preservation and qiraat and relationships between them these are very very difficult issues and the most advanced of our scholars they're not quite fully certain how to solve all of the unanswered yeah. questions in there. Now, Muhammad Hijab should have known about the Streisand effect. When Baba Streisand tried to hide photos of the mansion in California, it drew further attention to it. Hijab, if you try to hide something, that just makes it go more viral. If the video is already mirrored on Yasir Qadi's channel, what good would removing part of it from yours be? Do you really think that'll work? But I know what Hijab will say. We did this because we didn't want to confuse the masses. Muslims don't need to know about Quran preservation. It'll hurt the Iman and cause more doubt. Like Yasir Qadi said, it's not wise to discuss these issues in public. It's not. Better that we keep it behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Under the burqa. There was even a bigger bombshell that came later. And by the way, this is now a well-known open secret amongst many Muslim graduate students and, and, and academics around the world. And yeah. this is well known. Traditional understandings of Ahruf and Qiraat cannot answer some of these pressing questions that are now being poked by our uh, people outside of, by our academics, not our, by their academics outside of the faith tradition. You see, in a Muslim environment, there's always some respect that we have for the Quran. We should. In a Muslim environment, we'll press a little bit and then we'll say, okay, khalas, sami'na wa ata'na. And that's great, alhamdulillah. He did not translate, uh, which means, okay, stop here, we obey. We heard and we obey. Don't question. This is what Muslims will do. But he's saying that others, they will not do that. They will hit hard and they will expose us. When you go to academia, they don't have that red line. And they're going to just, you know, the, 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 the famous story of the emperor with no clothes. They're going to just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's not true. And this and that. And they'll bring issues, which I'm not going to make. Did you notice what he said? The famous story of the emperor with, with no clothes. I have it in the front of my book, actually. If you remember, the king is naked. He just said that Muhammad, his nakedness exposed. Otherwise, why he is comparing the Quran and Muhammad to the story of the naked king and the boy, who nobody dared to say to him, you are naked, but the boy, he is innocent. He said the king is naked. He just said that. Comparing the stupid king who accepted the smart tailor story that nobody can see this dress unless he hates you and he is hypocrite and he's a liar. But he himself did not see that dress. So he was a fool. And now he is comparing Yasir Qadri, the fool king, to the fool Muhammad. Very glorious. Mention explicitly that you know are true because they're in your own books. They're not inventing anything new. They'll bring you riwayat and they'll bring you athar and then you add to that very well-known issues of I don't even want to be explicit. And then you bring on top of that makhlutat. And then and then. And it's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. The standard narrative have holes. Islam have holes. Many sink. is sinking. is leaking everywhere. So we have to put a glue. And then what is the glue we will use? Mimi hijab glue, the one he said in every video, he go online, he have like little ball in his hand, says, brothers and sisters, buy this. <laughs> the standard narrative does not answer some very pressing questions. Okay, this is what I'm going to say. Well-known secret among academics, huh? And did you catch that? He just said, Alhamdulillah, we poke a little and then we stop. 
is he serious? He's saying it's good to be skeptical but not actually follow the evidence where it leads. Why not? Because it'll take you out of Islam? Because it'll destroy the narrative of the Quran being fully preserved? And then the final bombshell. Muhammad Hijab thought he was going to save the day with this question. But it so spectacularly backfired on him. It backfired so badly like you cannot imagine. Hijab asks, if you had a blank Mus'haf, meaning a Quran, and write down with no interference what was revealed from Allah, would you write down what corresponds to the existing Quran we have? Yasakadi interrupted him and didn't even let him finish the question. I'll ask you one question to try and make this as specific as possible, I think. If I were to give you a blank Mus'haf, yeah, and, uh, and tell you to write what is Munazzal verbatim from Allah into that Mus'haf with no human interference, would you write something which corresponds? It's with not an easy answer. It's not an easy yes or no. <laughs> it is enough for the Muslim to believe that the I Quran think this should be an Quran. easy yes or no, though. It should be. It should be. I, I have to be okay. Very, very well. So I beg you. I beg you. It should be an easy, please. Come on. I mean, come on. Just make it seem easy. But come on. This should be an easy. Like, I mean, this guy, he cannot keep his mouth shut. He want to continue. He tried to fix it. He make it blind. The first eye is gone. Now he is making the second eye go blind. And now he have no eyes. So he tried to fix it. It's enough for the Muslim to believe that the I Quran think this should be an Quran. easy yes or no though. Yes, I, I, I have it. to be Okay, very, very well. So yeah, Muhammad, after we get off this phone call, me and you, let's have a number of discussions. No problem. I'm very yeah. open with advanced students. But these issues should not look- Did he call him a student? Did he call him a student? Advanced student. He is advanced student. <laughs> and Mimi hijab like a puppy. He did not say I'm not your student. He did not say what I'm talking about. I'm not your student. He said, I like discussion with advanced students. Calling hijab a student of him. And yes, he is. He have tons of interview in the car. In the, even he asked him about things which is very silly. What to do? But after we get off this phone call, me and you, let's have a number of discussions. No problem. I'm very yeah. open with advanced students. But these issues should not... Look, it is Kalamullah, what is going to be written. It is Kalamullah. What, it is what, 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 what would you write? Uh, 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 let's you not... Write? Let, let's, you, you're pushing me. And I'm saying it's not hikmah to... Listen, I have a condition. Like I said, everything I say is going to be factual. If I wanted to do okay. Tawriya and whatnot, I would do it right now in front of you. There is no need for Tawriya. You say, if you want to do Tawriya, you see the Muslims, they do Tawriya, which means they do Taqiyya. They, they hide things, they use Burqa. Imagine they are saying that this is what we do. He says, but it's not time for me now to use Tawriya. I'm not going to hide it now. Don't force me now. Because this conversation is between two Muslims and supposedly the audience are Muslims. So there's no need for us to do Tawr, you know, and cover it, but there's no need to put it in public. The Quran is the uncreated speech of Allah. The Quran is preserved. The Quran is known. The Quran is mutawatir. And alhamdulillah, all of the qiraat are the Quran. All of the qiraat are authentic. Alhamdulillah. Leave it at that, ya akhi. Beyond this... Leave it at that. That's it. Don't discuss it. Honestly, I have no problem. We'll have a discussion or take my class. Or take my class. Did you see what Muhammad Hijab said to him after he said to him, take my class, he cut the video. But beyond this requires background information. It is enough for the Muslim to know that the Quran is the speech of Allah that has been protected and what we recite is the kalam of Allah. That's that it. is enough for the Muslim to know. I, I appreciate I wanted what you're to saying, say one thing. but I, I, look. <laughs> There you have it, folks. The Quran is the speech of Allah. It's preserved because it says it is. End of story. Stop asking questions. Don't worry about it. Just do your five times prayers and carry on. You know, it's even worse than this. Hijab is now distancing himself from what Yasir Qadi said. So much for supporting his guest, his scholarly guest. He issued a statement that included, if Dr. Qadi holds an opinion that opposes the ijma consensus of the ummah or makes anti-normative claims, he will be refuted. Can you imagine talking about your guest like that, an esteemed scholar? What a slimy thing to do. To throw him under the bus to save yourself. At least you could have defended his brother. Not much of a friend behaving like this, if you ask me. Absolutely. This is Islam, my friend. They betray each other.
It's like a hyena a tribe. There is no friendship. There is no loyalty. There is nothing called dignity. There is nothing that's called right and wrong. Save myself, throw himself under the bus. Mimi Hijab, he will lose donation because of the questions he made. Yasser Qadri, he will lose donation because of the answer he gave. Both of them now, they are in chaos. The first one is hiding, the second one is hiding too. He said clearly, we should not put it in public. I'm not going to answer you in public. Don't force me, don't push me. And then he says, oh, you will be refuted. A second ago, you were asking him for his opinion. A second ago, you were agreeing that you are his student. You go all the way to America to see him. You invite him all the way to England. Tons of interviews. Yes, Sir Kadri, what we should do here? Yes, Sir Kadri, what do you think? Yes, Sir Kadri, and this is what this interview is about. He's asking Yes, Sir Kadri, what is right? So how come Yes, Sir Kadri will be refuted now? Because Yes, Sir Kadri, he said, that no one no, no one dare to say. And I'm sure Yasser Kadri, by the way, he is sorry for saying this, having this inter. Both of them, they have, they are, they are, they feeling bad for having such an interview, for it's exposed the hypocrisy of the Muslims and how they betray each other, how they leak the leak the, the emails for each other, betraying each other. You know, even they might even add stories to the stories to make spices about it, to fabricate story about you, to make you lose the credit. And now, if you go on YouTube, you will find tons of videos made by Muslims attacking Yasser Kadri. Suddenly, all the Muslims want to refute Yasser Kadri. But the fact, the one who did this problem is Mimi. May Allah bless him and give him extra version. And by the way, I'm really shocked about how much weight you lost. Mimi? Mean. Looked like Ramadan, he took a piece of you. I mean, literally, you... When we look at, at his face, you know, Mimi Hijab, he looked like, you know, he ate like a non-stop all the month of Ramadan. I mean, look at this face, man. He's going to explode like a balloon. I'm not going to stay longer than this. Please download the video as soon as we finish. We will not keep it here for long. Maybe two or three hours maximum. And after that, we will take it off. Please post it everywhere you can. Let everybody laugh. And Islam is a joke. And those are the jokers who claim dignity, but they don't have it. They claim honesty. They don't have it. They claim that they are people of honor. But the last one who can speak about honor is the one who betray each other. And the one who defend the women who said something very evil about Jesus, she is a Muslim. Just to make a point, trying to attack a person like me, Christian Prince, make him lose a credit. You cannot do that, my friend. People, they knew I was quoting your prophet. Even in your video, you idiot. And you dummy. When you say to me, did you say to her, suckle her? And then they say, Christian Prince, sexual predator. Why? Because I was quoting a prophet of Islam, saying to Muslim women, suckle him. So if you say to a Muslim woman, suckle me, you are a sexual predator. The prophet, he can say that. He can order Muslim women to suckle you. But Christian prince, he can say that. He cannot. Haram! That will make you a sexual predator. And the funny, the Muslim women, she said, <laughs> uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, he is an adult. He is a grown man. The prophet, he says, I know, I know. He's a, she said, how I can suckle him and he is a growing man like Christian Prince? He said, <laughs> he smiled. He's laughing at her. I already knew he is, a, this is a translation of Muslims, is that he is a, a growing man. And this is exactly what happened in the video, which we played for you. When I say to the Muslim women, in fact, it's your prophet who said to Muslim women, suckle me. Can I suckle you? Go. Hmm? I know what happened to the video. Stop. Can I suckle you? Can, can I suckle? Can I? Can I suckle you? Tell you? Can I suckle you? Can I suckle you? Tell you? Listen. So you see the coward, Muhammad Hijab is the video editor. His sister, she was accusing Jesus that he was playing with the breast of his mother in a sexual way, and then they cut the video. They play only Christian Prince saying, "Can I suckle you?" As Muhammad said. And that make me supposedly a sexual predator. So those people, they have no dignity, no honesty, fraud following a fraud. So why you expect, why, how you expect dignity from somebody following a fraud? You will notice the second you leave Islam, the dignity come back.
like what happened to this gentleman. He's being honest. He is born of a Muslim family. He is his family, all of them, I think, Muslim. Actually, not only that, he I saw one of his videos. He's saying that he was working in Dawah, he wanna promote Islam, he wanna invite people to Islam, and then he and the more he learned, the more he noticed that Islam is nothing but a fraud. So when there is a Muslim, he have a dignity, he act with his dignity. So we can say not all Muslims are the same. A Muslims who they are doing business like Mimi Hijab are a fraud. They do the whole business. And the whole business is very simple. Everything is for sale. God, religion, prophets, and even their friend Qadri is for sale now. They will put him under their feet so they can make profit like their prophet prophet. The prophet of the booty. Prophet booty Muhammad. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is a fraud. And thanks for Mimi Hijab and all the team for the bad play, which we enjoy. God bless. Take care.